Welcome to the Nav Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Gudmundsson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Today, what I wanted to talk about uh, is chart objects or, or chart parts. Um, those are very useful for role centers. And uh, in 2017, I mean, we have some, some, you know, new features using charts. And uh, what I'm going to show is just a simple way to add a custom chart to the role center. Now, to begin with, the role center is uh, a, the view that the user sees when he logs in. So you can assign a role center to a user and they will see a certain view. Right now I'm logged in um, as a project manager. This is my role center, so it's been predefined for me. All of the options that I have here, uh, all of the tiles, etc. is predefined for a project manager role, which my user has been assigned to. So um, now I want to change that and I would like to put a chart part over here. I have a big screen, so I have all this empty real estate over here that I would like to put something interesting in. And I want to make that chart part myself. Um, and what I like to see is uh, all of the open balances for customers. Uh, there are Peter Sato's customers. So I am working with Peter Sato. I'm the project manager. He's the salesperson. And I would like to see like how his customers are paying so we can, you know, help uh, maybe speed up the payments. Um, so what I can do is actually I can navigate here into something called charts. And I'll get an option here called generic charts. So these are user defined charts. I can make my own charts. I get in here and there are a few. Uh, predefined charts that come with the system if you install the actually demo version, the Cronus version. Um, and you can see that some of them are have the uh, prefix Q, some of them have the prefix T, and that means that they're either based on a query or a table. Queries are a little bit more complicated and I would like to actually create another uh, video where I'll build a query but I'm going to use table for this one because this is like the first and the easy one. It gives you an idea of how to dive into it. Uh, so I'll just create a new one. And I'm going to call it balance. And the source type here is going to be a table. And the source ID, now this is going to be a little bit tricky for people who do not code. And the whole idea behind this is that you don't have to program anything. But you do need to understand what the tables, what the tables contain. Um, and in this case, I'm looking at the customer ledger entries, so table 21. That is, those are the transactions for the customers. Uh, and so I want to get data out of that table. So I pick that one. Uh, and then it gives me a name here other than the ID. I'm just going to call it customer balance. Um, and then we have a required measure for the Y axis. And the Y axis, I want to pick, and again, if you don't code, you have to understand what the fields are here. And there is a bunch of different fields, but I want to pick the remaining amount. The remaining amount is how much is left to be paid off the transaction. Uh, so they could have partially paid a transaction or an invoice, and there could still be some remaining. All right, so I'll pick that, and then we can select an aggregation, and the aggregation is going to be the sum. So I want to sum all the remaining amounts for the transactions. Uh, and I'm okay with this being a column graph. And we'll just again call this balance. Um, I'll put it over here as well, balance. And so for the X axis, what do we want to show across? I am actually going to pick the customer number. Now going through this, uh, 
the number sometimes is a numerical number for the customer and it's hard to know like or remember everybody's number so it would have been nice to actually have the name here um, but the customer ledger entry table does not contain the customer name because that would be redundant um, so a query would solve that uh, but for now we'll have to do with numbers so you can already see some limitations of just using table um, but you get uh, you know you get good enough information so the chart description here is going to be again customer balance and remember I only wanted to see this for Peter Sato because uh, I don't want to see everybody's uh, customers and of course that would be a very long chart so I'm going to go here into filters and I'm going to create a filter and I am going to pick the salesperson code right here and I'm going to just fix the filter at PS which is Peter Sato like so and now I should have created or should have already finished the chart so I'll just hit OK. And I have here a new chart called Balance. So how do I actually use this? I go back to my home screen here and I can go up and customize and say customize this page. Uh, and I can add a chart part. And I'm actually going to move that to the right up here because I want to use that. Uh, and I customize this part and when I hit customize you can notice that I get a list of all of these generic charts that I had and I'm gonna look for mine oops which is all the way at the top balance and I hit OK and now you can see that I have the customers balance customer balances to the right um, so this is kind of an easy way to create a generic tar chart using a table. There are many more options of charts. I just did column layout. You can do pi, stacked, uh, etc. And of course, you know, a little tweaking like wanting to get the name here instead of the number would require a query, uh, which will I will get into in another demo. So thank you for watching. Bye bye. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. As always, we welcome any questions or suggestions. Um, so leave comments or, of course, if you can subscribe, that would be awesome. Uh, we are trying to build our fan base over here at Anacta. And uh, if you want to look for further information, please go to anacta.com.